Ah, good, you're back. So, in the last video, I was puzzling over how to make a standalone CPM Z80 computer out of one of these, a Z80 Playground, and one of these, which is a VGA32. And so what I've done is I've got a few more of the parts together, and I think I've got pretty much everything I need now to make a standalone Z80 CPM computer. So let's start with this case. Uh, this is going to be the most important part of the whole thing. I got this off eBay. I think it looks quite nice. It's made out of something like one millimeter thick aluminium. Uh, this is plastic around the edges here, but all the rest of it is aluminium and it's got a plate on the front and the back. And if I take the front plate off, you can see that there is, uh, once this panel's come off, you can see there's absolutely barrel loads of space in there. Loads of space, plenty of space to put. Um, Z80 Playground and VGA32 and anything else I can think of that I might need to put in there. And I've got in the back of my mind the Research Machines 380Z computer while I'm making this and I thought this case was about the nearest I could get to something like that. So the idea is that this will be a stand for the monitor to sit on and the computer, well, the computer will go in there, monitor on the top and the keyboard at the front. So let's take a look at the monitor. And in fact, I've got a choice of two monitors. This Lenovo one, which I got off eBay for quite cheap, um, fits on the top there quite nicely. It's a VGA monitor. I'm not sure about the resolution and stuff like that of it yet, but I quite like the fact that it's got an almost square aspect ratio, which I think is in keeping with the CPM era. Um, but I've got another monitor. And yeah, I've got this silver one as well, which I got free um, from someone having a bit of a clear out of their garage. And that's a VGA monitor as well, and a similar kind of aspect ratio. And it doesn't say Lenovo on the front of it, so I quite like it, actually. But the important thing is that they're both VGA monitors, which is critical because this is the VGA32, which I'm using to do the, the screen part of the project, and it only has a VGA connector on it. And when it comes to keyboards, I also have a choice of two. I've got this uh, rather outrageously big keyboard with the clunky sounds, um, which I got off FreeCycle, and it was advertised as a keyboard with an old-fashioned connector on it, and sure enough it does, there we go. PS2 connector, which is exactly what I need because the VGA32 only has a PS2 socket on it. And the other alternative keyboard is this uh, completely black, uh, very bland looking one here, which is actually brand new, I got that off eBay, it was pretty cheap. And again, it has a PS2 connector on it, uh, what brand is that? Uh, Perix. And of course the uh, brain of the computer is the Z80 Playground. So that's um, got the Z80 at the front here, Z80 CPU, uh, 64K RAM here, uh, boots ROM here, it's an EEPROM that it boots from. This is the UART and um, it can run CPM. And CPM runs from this here, which is um, a USB pen drive um, and that pen drive has got on it all the drives so what happens is instead of having 16 floppy drives attached to my computer I've got 16 floppy drives on that pen drive each corresponding to one folder so like folder A, folder B, folder C etc on that drive um, so it's gonna, although it's going to be a CPM computer it won't have any real floppy drives but I think it's a lot more convenient that, uh, I sacrifice having real floppy drives for the convenience of just being able to copy a program from my PC, download a PC off the internet, copy it onto that uh, memory stick, stick it into the computer, and we're done. Now, I was going to make my CPM computer out of this ready assembled Z80 Playground, and then I thought to myself, don't be such an idiot. What's the point in taking a ready assembled one and taking bits off in order to make it fit nicely into a case? So instead, I. Thought I um, I got a new PCB and effectively I made it, uh, I'm, I'm putting together a Z80 Playground kit and I'm customising it so that it works better inside a case. So what I've done is I've um, made a few modifications to this to make it work better in uh, inside a case rather than just sitting on the desk like the normal one does. Um, so the modifications, so for example, I haven't put a ZIF socket on here because I can't see that I'm ever going to want to remove the EEPROM from its socket. So I've just put an ordinary socket there. And everything that uh, is a switch or an LED, I'm putting flying leads on. So this is the reset button here, it's on flying leads. Uh, the 
LEDs that go along here, I'm putting those on flying leads so I can bring them out to the front panel or the back panel of the case. Now also I was stupidly thinking of making the whole thing powered by 12 volts but I thought that's making life difficult for myself so I'm going to power it by 5 volts from USB. So I've got this USB, uh, USB socket here, it's just a USB socket on a breakout board and um, I'm, I've soldered that to a couple of wires that bring the power in. So what I want to do is make a hole in the back, the, the back panel of the case, have this poking out the back so you can plug your USB in there to get power. So that brings power in. I brought power via, where is it? This um, lockable switch, which is going to go in the front panel. Um, and that is powering directly into the five volt and ground pins of the Z80 Playground PCB. Uh, the reset pin, uh, button switch, I had to do a little bit of creative soldering there to bring the reset out to this switch here, which I'm going to put in the front panel. So in every instance, what I plan to do is to bring uh, all the things out that you need from here to the either the front or the back of the case. So if it's something you have to press or something you want to see, like an LED or a switch, I'm going to put it at the front. If it's something you need to plug in, so the VGA, uh, the keyboard and the power, I'm going to put those on the back. So I'm just going to cut or drill holes into the panel, I'm going to drill into this piece of quite thin aluminium, should be reasonably straightforward to do that I think, and um, then put the LED, so I have, I think, I want the USB stick coming out the front, power on, reset button, uh, the LEDs, etc on the front one. And in order to do that I'm going to need to extend a few bits and pieces, so um, to extend the USB socket so that you can plug the USB, you can pull a USB drive out quite easily. I'm going to extend that from the Z80 Playground. So if we can do that now, well this is the other Z80 Playground. So where that would go in there normally. So that's going to plug in there. We'll then bring that out to the front panel. That's quite a nice adapter actually suggested to me by Phil and um, we can plug that. So the USB drive will just plug into the front of the computer. Um, and the VGA, I think I'm just going to cut a hole and stick that out the back. And then, unfortunately, the PS2 for the mouse comes out of the opposite end to there. So I need to get that round there. So I've got this PS2 extension lead. Um, I'm thinking I can probably work out a way to get that to extend round to the back. I don't really want to have the whole of that thing sitting in the case, but maybe we can just chop a bit off. So the next stage then is going to involve quite a bit of drilling of panels, here they are, yeah, drilling one of these panels and the back panel, um, soldering up the whole kind of wiring loom, I might need a little PCB because as I said in the first video, I need to do level conversion between the 3.3 volts of one board and the 5 volts of the other board. I should be able to get that assembled and put into the case and I think it will look pretty good. Software and Z80 assembly language I'm pretty good at, soldering I'm pretty good at, but drilling holes in metal panels a bit more of a challenge, so uh, in the next video we'll see how I get on.